Okay, with the director Sangeeta Iyer, uh, Miti is the short film. It's 30 minutes long, play at the Documentary Film Festival. It's it's a film about an organic farmer, but the way you tell the story, it's much more than about this, the story of this organic farmer, I guess, right? Yes, uh, Matthew, thanks for having me. And um, uh, let me just start off by saying that the, the experience I've had with your festival has been the most unique so far. So thank you for... Um, all the work that you guys have been doing that it's been really unique and uh, we really enjoyed, I really enjoyed the experience um, up with your festival. So uh, one, I'm very glad that um, you picked up on that uh, because that was really my hope as a director that people catch that. Yes, it's the story of an organic farmer and I'm, I'm showing her journey, but I wanted to weave in some layers because not everyone watching it is an organic farmer or, or maybe wants to be an organic farmer. So what's in it for them? So yes, I've tried to weave in some layers and I'm so glad that you and uh, the, some of the reviews I heard from your festival, I heard them um, grab onto that as well. Well, you, you start the film in space, right? Uh, with the voiceover and you're saying it's about kind of like, well, you, you, get, you kind of tell it like you can tell it better than I can, but thematically you tell the kind of like you set the tone of the film by saying, yeah, this is more than this person doing this job, I guess. Yes. And it's also about um, I kind of wanted to highlight my roots a bit um, because um, where I come from, um, nature, uh, earth, soil, uh, we, we, we look up to those as um, as almost as God, right? We have names for them. So we call it Bhumi Devi, which is, um, Devi is a loose translation is goddess. So it's divine mother. We look up to um, mother earth, mother nature. That's how we address in, uh, you know, I'm a Hindu. Um, and so I wanted to highlight that a bit. We've opened it with the earth and we've opened it also with uh, a Sanskrit shloka, which is um, a chanting in Sanskrit that um, highlights the importance of, um, mother earth so that's really how i wanted to open it and then kind of hone into this particular girl um who's an organic farmer here in in canada okay so you're I, i'm gonna but butcher the what the what the, the the japanese philosophy that that what is the job what is what's the what's the word the japanese philosophy I, ikigai Ikida. so that's what basically it's discovering that it's discovering that's what that's the theme of your film it's discovering this japanese philosophy that is embedded in our daily lives and is absolutely everything that they do so that's basically the the term what tell us what that means though is that are you are you are you the are you in this philosophy is this sort of the film about what your 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 ideology is as well yeah yeah absolutely so you know um, um i'm a bit of a research geek and i love reading so um when I came across this concept, um, I got the idea of weaving it into the film because I realized that there's a lot of versions out there. First of all, it is a Japanese concept, but there are a lot of versions, models, books out there on Ikigai. And I kept reading more and more um, to see which one made more sense. And I found the most authentic one um, to be by a neuroscientist. He's a Japanese neuroscientist, uh, Ken Mogi, Dr. Ken Mogi. Uh, his his model and his book resonated the most with me. And um, I figured that, you know, it'd be a great way to incorporate that philosophy. Yes, I, I follow that too. But even in this girl's journey, as I was asking her the questions when I was interviewing her, um, it felt right to do that. So, you know, it, 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 in a very concise form, I can just say that how Ken Mogi explains Ikigai, he explains it as a huge spectrum. Uh, it's an umbrella term almost. And basically what it does is it helps us appreciate the abundance of ikigai that life offers us. Now that can be uh, a daily habit, like you're drinking your cup of coffee in the morning. I am a huge chai addict. So for me, having that cup of chai for me is that feeling of ikigai every single day. But it could be a uh, you know, huge life defining goal that you or I may have, and that's ikigai as well. So uh, you know, growing up, let's say I wanted to represent my country. I was a national hockey player. Yeah. back home and i wanted to represent my country that was my my big dream so that's ikigai too but me enjoying my cup of chai is a feeling of ikigai too so i wanted people to to take that message away saying and, and leave them with a question which i have in the end is like what's your ikigai and you know yeah. how do you define your ikigai okay so i'll kind of paraphrase that uh with my interpretation it's about it's about appreciating the simple things that you love in life 
but also understanding the macro kind of like what's inside of you and what your kind of purpose in life is as well. Is that a good Absolutely. definition? A very good. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Because it's, it's about both the micro and the macro, I guess, right? You got it. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about, let's, let's talk about your subject. Like where did you find uh, the organic farmer? Who's your subject in your film? Um, so, you know, as a filmmaker, I feel like I'm always, um, on the lookout for good topics, interesting people um, that I come across. And there are two or three areas in life that I feel I, I, I gravitate towards most because education is a big part of my background too. Uh, I was not always a filmmaker. Uh, so education and psychology is a big part of my background. So any topic that relates to that environment is something um, that I connect with deeply. And uh, I'm a huge animal lover. So anything to do with kindness, compassion, animals. So those are my big three buckets. And this was a, a coincidence, actually. I was invited to attend an online screening of another film during COVID. Um, and uh, it was through the city. And I just joined the session, curious to learn more because I love, um, you know, because I'm so fascinated by the environment and the aspect of Mother Earth, I always want, my mother was really good at gardening and growing things. And I felt I never had that green thumb. So I actually joined this because the film was about, um, about farming. And post the film, we had some uh, Q&A and discussion uh, with the people who were attending. And when I expressed why I had joined and you know that I learned a lot out of this film and may maybe I can start something, uh, I guess they realized I'm local and I'm South Asian. They just mentioned this girl's name, say, you must know her. See, she's South Asian too. And I'm like, oh, I've never heard of her. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they told me her name and I just out of curiosity looked her up, her website, and I really liked what I saw. The first thing that it did for me personally was it broke the stereotype that I had about a farmer. So yeah. it was a lesson for me as well that, oh, wow, she's a farmer. And I, when I met her and I reached out to her, um, she, she expressed interest in being part of the film too. She was very excited. But I told her honestly that, um, you know, I, we all have these stereotypes in our mind. And I had this image of a farmer, which you totally broke for me. I mean, I could look at you and think that you could, you could be a model. I mean, how did you end up being a farmer, right? So for me, it was that my lesson too. And I thought it would be interesting for others to, um, you know, to, to hear her story um, and, and realize that, you know, a farmer can look like this too. And the other aspect was she's really young, right? So yeah. even for our youth out there, I'm a mother. And I feel like um, as the young, for the younger generation, but also for us as parents, um, I don't come across uh, uh, parents often who encourage their children to become farmers, right? We have those typical careers that we want our kids to go into. But I have never heard anyone say, hey, like, you know, you should be a farmer. It's a great yeah. profession. So <laughs> I wanted to highlight that. Yeah, it's um, true. Yeah. Again, right? And the other aspect was for even the, the youth out there, if they are watching, because um, through my films, I want to connect the education aspect. And um, because I volunteer with certain school boards and, um, you know, if they like the film, if they wanted to showcase the film to their teachers, to their children, I want to make it friendly for, for everybody in the school board system. I thought even our younger generation should watch her who, you know, is this young girl who's followed her passion in life and made it work. And it's not just a passion like a hobby, right? Because we all can follow a hobby and it's great. But she's actually making a living out of it. Like it's a, it's a, it's, it's a career and that's her full-time earning. And it, it's doing, she's doing great. So yeah. I wanted the young, younger generation to see that too and, and, you know, hopefully make them realize that it's okay if you don't, don't follow the traditional uh, career path that every other person uh, is following. Like follow your passion to and work towards it. Yeah. Well, this so, is yeah. right. Like the world's turning upside down, and, and there's different. There's different, going to be different jobs, different careers, and and the, the, like I and I just want to make up the point about um, about how you kind of like because I obviously see a lot of documentary films, and I liked how you described it because you're learning as you're learning as a filmmaker as the audience is learning, and you can see that you could. It's like a subconscious thing where we under like you're not you don't know the subject on a grand scale. So while you're filming her and you're listening to her and you're asking her questions in the interview, you're you're discovering what she does as the audience is. So it's like it really kind of it's a great great way to make a documentary where some people like have this they they know they think they know everything and they make this documentary about like the subject that they know everything about. But you're learning, and so you can it, it comes across in your in your film. So it's a great way to make a film. 
Oh, I'm so, so actually really happy to hear that uh, because Matthew, because that's exactly what it was. I do give a certain, I have a vision about the film as you know, I have the opening begin and end in my mind, but I leave it open because, you know, like you said, it's not a fictional film, it's a documentary. And I have a certain set of questions that, you know, I send my subjects in advance because I have to be mindful that these are not actors. And, you know, there's all this nervousness about facing a camera. And the last thing I need is for them to kind of choke on, oh, what do I say? And, you know, I don't want them to sound robotic or, or rehearse, but I want them to give enough time so they can, you know, put some thought to the questions. But I always tell them in advance that I'm notorious for not sticking to the script yeah. because you you might say something and that will trigger this new question in me saying, wow, because I'm very curious. Um, and I hope you're okay with that because I think it's very important to ask good questions um, uh, for the other person to be able to to reply to you in depth. And um, also being mindful that sometimes they're not actors. So for example, I had to interview, we did this interview more than once. Like we had to record a couple of times. We had some yeah. issues too. Uh, we, had, we made some mistakes too. But other than that, um, to kind of um, force her almost to speak more. So I would say, oh, that's great. Like, can you... Can you expand on that for me? Oh, that's very interesting. Can you tell me more, right? Because uh, sometimes the answers are really short uh, and specific. And I'm thinking, no, there's more. I know there's more that she can tell. Yeah. So I'm so glad that you, you, you picked up on that because actually I was learning as I was going through the film. I was learning and I had like light bulb moments. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is interesting. Yeah. And it's almost like uh, it's like basically because she knows the subject really well. So, and like you said, she's not an actor. So it's almost like someone asking you about film. You and I are talking about film, but we already know about film. So we have a different shorthand, but you have to get what she already knows in her head to come out, right? Cause it's like, it's sh such shorthand for her that she talking about planting and things like that, but we don't know as an audience, but it's like, you have to, you have to get her to explain it to us, right? What, what she's talking about. Exactly, exactly. So, and also one of the thing, big things I learned in your film as well is that is that there's this preconceived notion that a farmer has a house and they live in this farm and they basically, this is where they live. And it's like, no, she just has a patch of land and she she lives somewhere else and she just goes to work in this patch of land and this this little small patch. And I'm sure she'll expand it and it'll be bigger. But right now she's making a living with just having a small patch of land and growing her vegetables. And that's all she needs right now. Exactly. And, you know, uh, she was doing a workshop somewhere and I found out and you know how filmmakers, I'm like, I'm coming. Can I come film you? Because um, this is a workshop where they were talking about you can start a little mini garden of sorts or grow your own vegetables in a balcony. Because a lot of us who live in like a smaller home or even a, a condo or an apartment with a balcony feel like, oh, we need two acres of land or three acres of land to, to grow vegetables. And, you know, I learned so much and I was so inspired that I, I grew a vegetable patch in my tiny little backyard. And uh, I remember at one point when I went to, to record some B-rolls, you know, when we were editing, I realized I was missing some B-rolls. So I went over to her and I, I was so proud that I had grown some organic kale and uh, uh, green peppers, hot peppers. And yeah. uh, I took a bunch of them uh, as a gift for her. And she was like, so she was blown away because this is from my garden, I said. And, yeah. you know, it's not easy. Uh, so, it? It's not no. easy to make like the girl kale or <laughs> girl peppers. No, it's not. But, you know, it's so rewarding, Matthew, because I remember seeing that. And it just, I don't know, I cannot explain the joy. Like the joy I felt seeing it grow and actually... It was just a sense of gratitude that I felt when I was even picking those and bringing in in my kitchen to cook versus going to a grocery store. And I actually did a mini experiment of sorts um, um, uh, when we were filming. It was I had a few children um, of my younger ones age. I had gathered them and I had obviously taken permission from the parents and everything. And we were going to film them and take a portion of that in the film. And I had invited um, Rav over to to kind of do a mini teaching lesson out in the garden. Like that was my vision. And then I would, and, and you know, some personal um, thing happened in our family. Someone was very unwell. And so we 
had to cancel the shoot but the kids and the parents were so excited to be there uh, i still let them come and we did some filming and had a fun session with them and i pretended to be the farmer and i was asking them questions so there's some shots we have taken from that uh, not as much but the reason i'm sharing that with you is that i asked all these kids about um, a farmers market what's organic food uh, what do they know about i'm and they didn't have the answers yeah. and uh, again to me that was a light bulb moment as a mother going our kids don't even know where our food is coming from i'm not saying every kid out there that was just the experience i had with you know um, half a dozen kids that i was mm-hmm. talking to they weren't aware uh, of where the food is coming from um, you know where it's grown who's growing how it do- how does it come to the store what's a farmers market um why we need to appreciate the farmers why ne- do we need to have a sense of gratitude towards mother nature so again like I, like i said again a new learning for me that would be great if we could involve kids um and you know i speak to school boards and say you know maybe arrange a, um, a field trip to a farmer like hers yeah. and let the kids learn more about what it is and have an experiment with them let them each grow a, and that's what i did with the kids who came to my place and i, I gifted them with a soil and seeds and i gave them homework of sorts saying you need to grow this and then keep me updated on how this is coming along yeah it is, well it's a cliche to say but it is interesting that that we all eat every day right <laughs> that's what we do it's it's just a, it's a human thing but we don't I, most of us don't including myself doesn't know what we're actually consuming right so and it it, it does affect our bodies 100 of course it does right like it, it from a psychological standpoint from an emotional standpoint from a physical obviously a physical standpoint it has to because this is what we're we're taking inside of our bodies right so and we don't know we don't know what we're eating so we don't and i i'm honestly telling you that this sense of we talk about these terms right we talk about gratitude and we talk about kindness and compassion i'm telling you the sense of gratitude that i felt and i can involve my kids to say come on let's grow this scale or let's you know it was just a whole different feeling of joy that i felt um bringing in that from my backyard and and cooking uh felt so grateful uh to mother nature and then these are things we want to inculcate in our next generation too yeah well it's she what did she think of the film when she saw it uh well she's still not seen it and it's interesting because um she's going to see it soon she's very excited she saw the trailer and i told her it's been accepted to film festival she loved the trailer um and you know she was more she was way more confident than i was how this would turn out because there were some glitches along the way and i had to reshoot and i was like oh god i hope to you know as a as a director as a writer i want to make sure i do justice to the the person to the subject yeah and um, she was so confident because she's seen my earlier film which was my debut film and she's like i have confidence in geeta just i know you're you know you're so passionate about this but obviously i still want her to see see it and i don't want her to see it online i want her to be with me when she sees it oh, because sorry. i want to see her reaction i want to i have invited her parents too because i have recorded them in the film too and i want to see their reaction to what they feel but yeah she loved loved her parents they loved the trailer so so she uh, she's got this uh, ability to communicate as well she has a, like a very uh like even when you when you have the, the the shots of her talking to the to the audience and like she there's there's a leadership ability that she has she can tell that she she works her butt off and she's like she doesn't need a man to like carry her her sack of uh hey <laughs> right no no she and doesn't and there's a lot of those shots so right so like yeah we've taken those shots in the film actually you watched it right that was intentional uh, where she's carrying the equipment she's carrying yeah. the stack of hay she does all that she does all of it and her family is really very supportive but i mean this is her baby like yeah and like basically she's a new generation right of like her culture like she's just she doesn't need like the it's the, it's a, it's like it's like almost defining the gen, the new generation coming up and they're not like there's like preconceived notion that they're lazy and they're like they're not focused but she is like she she's she's not lazy she's like up in the morning and like working her butt off every day creating a business and and actually helping the world make a better place not the sound corny oh. but she's no you're right. It, right yeah she's very focused she knows what she wants and she's very focused she has so much clarity in her mind and you know she has this set of values and she sticks by it and um i agree with you that i i know so many from the younger generation who are you know really good at what they do they they have 
they have a dream, they chase it. I mean, this, you know, we can't generalize. We tend to generalize human nature that, oh, all of these younger generation are lazy. They're not. We don't give them enough credit. So that's another way of giving them credit. Um, you know, especially I've seen them very passionate about the environment and causes related to the environment and animals, in my, in my opinion, at least. So, and then, yeah. then like the last 10 minutes or so of the film, you're giving us an education about how to farm. Like you're showing the potatoes, right? You're showing us like, this is what you do. I'm like, I had no idea. It's like, yeah. it's, like it's so hard. <laughs> you got to put also it on this I... angle and you got to put that, you got to put the, the, this type of soil and then this type of hay on top of it. It's, it all makes a difference, right? So. And, and Matthew was also like a little breeder, you know, when I was watching the edit, um, I mean, it, everyone's different. Again, documentary is not for everyone, but those who even watch it are very different in terms of an audience. And if you know, there's a lot of talking because I've interviewed her a lot. It's one person's story. So obviously she's talking, talking, talking. Yeah. And I, I'm okay with that. But I thought, you know, what if someone needs this bit of a visual break, right? Like from the talking. Like I had to make a conscious effort to give those visual breaks and I wanted to put in something fun. So even if a student is watching it or, or you know, a school is, is screening it, uh, you know, I wanted it to be fun. And when, when you see that, you after watching that, you, we, we think we can all grow potatoes. Like, that's not so so hard. Like, we could do this. Um, and it's just the way she's done it. So, yeah, it was more of a visual break, too, but also uh, a learning in that visual break. Yeah, amazing. And then, yeah, then you're, you keep going to the macro. You keep going to the big picture. Like, you go to the grocery stores. You go to the kids. You go to the, like... You're like, you're not just, you're giving us like this story, like I said, but then you keep going to like, okay, this is the theme. You're like, you're telling the audience, okay, this is what, what it's really about. This is, it's about the environment. It's about the next generation. It's about what are we consuming? Like you're like, you're, th you're keep throwing these, these, uh, your message across on the film, but not, not in, not in a, like a, a heady way. You just, it's kind of casual. So yeah, it's a pretty intense film. Did you always want it to be 30 minutes? Did you think it was going to be a bigger film? I'm just curious about the length. Hmm, that's a great question. Uh, when I start off, I have some idea that, you know, this is going to be short or not. 30, not so much. I was actually hoping for it to be like 15, 20. But when we started editing, I figured that I might not do justice to it in telling the whole story. But um, I didn't want it to be too, too long. Because I feel, unfortunately, people's attention span is so short these days. Um, so if I, if I can tell a tight, I, I like to keep my, my film very tight. And I don't, I don't like to waste even a few seconds in the film. So I wanted to make it actually shorter um, than 30. But I, I couldn't. I realized that it just won't do justice. So I said, yeah, okay, I need to stick to like half an hour if I can and get the message across. That was the, that was the goal. So you have a great origin story, too. We basically... And someone should make a film about you. <laughs> so you're, you're, uh, I don't know. I only know like the bullet points, but you're, you had this corporate career and then you had your second child. And then all of a sudden you're like, I don't want to go back to my, my well paying job. I want to, I want to make independent movies, which is good. That's, that's like, so you started kind of later in your, in your life on this. Did you all like when you were young, did you always have this passion for filmmaking and storytelling? I think it always, I think it was always there subconsciously because I, I have been a storyteller. I love writing. I love reading. Um, I was a big film buff growing up too. And I remember my dad and my friends would joke with me saying like, why don't you just do your PhD in films? Like it was a running joke in my house. And the, the thing is, um, the difference was that all my friends loved, uh, you know, the people on camera, but I love the behind the camera work. Like for me, it was always about how this was made and how people acted and what the story says. So maybe it always subconsciously was. I never set out to say I'll become a filmmaker, but I was very fascinated by films, by storytelling. I had I had a lot of ideas about different careers. I wanted to be a cop. Um, I wanted to you know play for my country because as a national hockey player, um, you know I wanted to at some point I thought I'll be you know because I love. Uh, you know, everything like I wanted to be a police officer at one time. I wanted to be a lawyer at one time. I kept changing my mind and my background is in education and psychology. And um, I was just about to start my PhD when I happened to move to Canada. And then I got into the corporate world. Again, I loved my job. No offense. I loved it. I loved the people there. I worked for several, several years in the corporate world. And I took a break with my second one, like I mentioned. And um, the plan was to go back. The plan was to go back after a two year break. I don't know what happened. I, I make a joke out of it and I say, maybe, I, yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, but 
I thought, let me try this out. I guess it was always a burning passion to tell stories. Yeah. And uh, filmmaking came not so much as to, I want to become famous and I want to be known. It was more about how can I make a difference about the, the areas that I'm passionate about. And I felt that film is such a strong medium um, to, to get the message across and to reach so many people in one go. So yeah. I think that's how it started. And then I found this really neat course. And I thought, um, you know, my husband, my best friend, I tell you, he supported me because I was on the fence saying, am I making the right decision? You know, like I'm giving up my paycheck and now joining film school. Like, what am I doing? Um, and he says, you know, just do it. What are you waiting for? Right. Like if you go back to your work now in the corporate world, you're never going to quit again. And, you know, you know how it is in a job, okay, right? No, like yeah. you're so busy. He's right. So he said, do it now. And he was the one who pushed me. And I'm so glad. And he says, you'll find out. If you, sometimes we think in life that, you know, something is our passion and until we start doing it and we realize it's not a passion at all. Uh, and he says, try it. At least you won't have the question 10 years from now saying, what if, you know? So I did it and I didn't notice, but he noticed that I never heard you grumble over the weekend, especially on Sunday evening saying, oh my God, the weekend's over. I have to get up early tomorrow and go to school. But you always did that when you were working. So he says, that's a good sign. That tells me you're enjoying this. Yeah. But even after I finished film school, it was, I think, just me and one other person from our entire class who, who continued on this path. And um, the rest never you yeah. know, got into it. They did the course, but they did. And, and so I feel grateful for that, too. And of course, I couldn't do it with the support of my family. Yeah. That support system is so critical because um, giving up my job and my paycheck and as an independent filmmaker, I'm sure you may know that it's not easy in the beginning, uh, especially, you know, you, no one knows you or your work. So, um, you know, there are so many struggles. But anyway, I'm, I'm glad I took this path and I'm really happy and um, I want to just keep making, you know, sto telling stories like these, uh, which have an impact and, uh, you know, yeah. affect people's well-being, make the world a better place. I want to just share good um, stories that people can connect with and resonate with. So, yeah, you're, you're describing idealist, I call it idealistic passion, meaning that you have this this idea that, oh, I want to do this. I want to make films and and basically because it's, it's, it looks exciting and then these people go in the film school and it's like, oh my God, this is this is really hard. This is a lot of work. And this is a lot of, a lot of stuff that I don't really like doing that much. And it's like their their dreams get shattered because it's like their their idealism's got the best of them, right? It happens all the time. And then all these people you go to film school with are gone within five years. And then there's the one like yourself, people like yourself were like, yeah, you're waking up in the morning and you're excited to go to go to school. You're excited to make your films. And that's when you know that you're in the right place, right? So, absolutely. And my, I remember my professor in film school always telling me there's like you know fifty percent creativity and fifty percent is the business side when it comes to filmmaking. And she yeah. joked with me always saying, "You are great at the first fifty of creativity, but the rest." Because I don't have that business mind, right? And she said, you'll have to work on that because you won't be able to keep making. So I'm not there yet, but I'm learning. That no, but it's, but said, it, it's also, it's the analogy of making a film, right? Like you all, you, if whatever your, your weaknesses are, not your weaknesses, but whatever you need strengths with, like your cinematographer or your sound designer or whatever it is, you find a collaborator, just like a producing partner. It's like, if you're, if you're not strong on that side, you find your collaborators and that's how and it's all about building filmmaking is all about building your team. Right. So. Absolutely. And, and, and especially a team where you have like-minded people. That's so that's what I've learned too, through my yeah. short journey as a filmmaker that you will come across some very talented people, but if your values and mindset doesn't match, it gets very difficult. So you have to be very, very picky in a way um, uh, to choose the right people to work with well, um, and make the experience positive. Well, I think this is a fantastic film. Like I said, like you're, you're throwing in these grand ideas, but it works. <laughs> a lot of times it doesn't work, but in your film, it works a, gr a great, great deal. And you kind of set the tone in the beginning of the film and you're like, you're, we're in space. And then you go into this garden and like, and then we, great subject. She's fantastic and uh, great film. So I want to, I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much, Matthew. And thanks again to all of you. What a fantastic festival experience you've given a new filmmaker like uh, myself, like the interviews, the, you know, the, the article that you guys wrote, the, the reviews that you shared. That's so encouraging for a new filmmaker like myself, because then, you know, you feel that, oh, my God, the audience got it. They, they understood your message and they, they so thank you because I have not had this experience with any other festival except yours. So thank you for that.
Thank you. Well, let's let's talk again when you make your next film. Done. <laughs> Done. All right. Let's. Uh, the, it was great talking with you, and like I said, great film, and I, I wish it the best of success. It's already winning awards. You can see, and uh, and uh, basically, and you're you're on your way. So I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you, Matty, so much.